welcome to Blueprint Unlocked, our podcast about all things Maryland Blueprint and the work we're doing in Frederick County Public Schools to bring this vision to life. I'm your host, Dr. Sarah Sergo, Chief of Staff and the Blueprint Implementation Coordinator for the school system. Blueprint Unlocked is designed to unpack, understand, and of course, unlock the work we are doing across the five key dimensions of the blueprint. Along with our milestone report, our quarterly update newsletter, and the resources we provide, we wanted to bring you additional opportunities, such as this podcast, to hear about our work directly from the experts leading those efforts. Today, we're gonna to unlock pillar 3B, career and technical education. I'd like to welcome to the podcast, one of the co-chairs of our pillar 3B subcommittee, Dr. Christine Pearl, supervisor of CTE for FCPS. We'd like to have you introduce yourself, Dr. Pearl, Tell everybody a little bit about what you do currently and why you are passionate about career and technical education. Well, that's an easy one because I am passionate about CTE. Um, as the supervisor of career and technical education, that means I oversee all of the CTE programs that are in our middle and high schools, as well as at the Career and Technology Center. Now, in that role, I work very closely with business and industry partners to make sure that all of our programs align to the local workforce needs and that we're preparing students for the skills that are needed to be successful within their chosen industry. As a former classroom teacher at both the middle and the high school levels, I became a huge advocate of CTE when I had the opportunity to witness students that were not necessarily doing well in their academic classes, but they were engaged and successful in CTE. In fact, many of these students flourished in the hands-on project-based environment. I think I grew as a teacher and in my passion for CTE, when I understood the impact that CTE could have in being able to connect students and their skills to meaningful careers. Well, we are so fortunate to have your expertise and you've been leading this work for, I think, at least 16 years, if not yeah. longer. Is I that think correct? this is my 16th year at Central Office prior right. to, to coming here. And you're well known across the state and you've really been such a, a guidepost for us in this work. And as you said, you know, three pillar 3B is focused on career and technical education. Um, we think in Frederick County, it's so important that we actually took our pillar three, which this is a part of, and pulled out CCR and gave you your own body of work is pillar 3B because CCR is in pillar 3A. And you've done a lot of work to help us achieve a number of milestones. Some of the, the three milestones that I'd like to highlight for our audience is number one, you have been working toward implementing the strategies that get us closer to that blueprint goal of having 45%, so almost half of mm -hmm. all of our students earn an industry recognized credential or participate in a youth apprenticeship program. That's not overnight work. Um, our goal is to get there by 2031. You, you've also been working towards, you know, looking at those industry credentials through the teacher professional development work, the curricular resources and moving that work along. And last, you've been, you know, pivotal in kind of creating all of those instructional resources, your teacher lens being such a, a great driver of that to enhance career awareness, career exploration. And really where we see the fruits of that labor is in the launch of the Career Coach Program, which is a new program through Blueprint that went into effect this school year. And it's important to note for our audience, we were the first school system in the state to be fully staffed for all of our career coaches. So lots to highlight. And when you think about that work and some of the things that you'd like to celebrate, what are you most proud of? What would you want our listeners to know about what's going well? Well, first, I want to share that I have a small but mighty team here at Central Office that really, they are all passionate about the work that we do. 
Um, but I do think I'm most proud of the career coach program. Uh, the blueprint for Maryland's future uh, specified that each school system would offer a career counseling program to help our student, students fully understand the post CCR options and to inform their career decision making. To me, it's incredible to think that this time last year, we were just starting to envision what's this program going to look like? How many career coaches do we need? How will they interact with students? And through that collaborative effort with the Frederick County Workforce Services and FCC, we were very um, able to very quickly create that vision and, as you said, implement the program. Um, we hired all of our career coaches and they started on July 3rd. We ran a seven week training program over the summer. And so they were able to start at the beginning of the school year. And we have 22 career coaches placed in our middle and high schools and they are truly making an impact. They're meeting with students individually and in small groups. They're pushing into classrooms to support career exploration as it pertains to the various contents. They've been scheduling learning lunches, field trips, and bringing in guest speakers. Um, and they also are promoting career-related opportunities like the apprenticeship program, career fairs, and our upcoming signing day on May 1st, where FCPS recognizes students that are going directly to the workforce. Uh, we have a scope and sequence in place for grades 6 to 12 so that they're getting consistent career-related content. Um, ranging from the identification of interest and skill assessments to learning about career options. And it's really exciting for me to hear about all of the activities that are taking place throughout FCPS. Um, and the career coaches have built their own professional learning and uh, community. So they collaborate, they share their best practices and resources with one another. So right now, they're starting to uh, plan on how they're going to support our summer school programs and offer career-related summer experiences as well. So when I think of all the new opportunities we've been able to provide in just one year, I can't wait to see how the program continues to grow and most importantly, to examine the data to determine the impact on students as a result of this program. Uh, and certainly everywhere I go, I hear uh, tremendous uh, appreciation and value for what they bring and the sort of the deliberate and, as you said, the sort of long term planning around what this looks like. It's not a an accidental sort of exposure. There's a deliberateness to what they're doing with students in sixth grade through 12. But you, you talked about this idea of this being interconnected. Um, and we know that one of the things we often talk about in our work with Blueprint is that the pillars are sort of part of the pre-K-12 experience, that nothing is in isolation. And while Pillar 3B focuses on career and technical education, we know there's a direct connection between that and the broader student experience and positive outcomes. Based on your experiences as a longtime educator and certainly longtime supervisor of this work, how do you believe that this CTE work is really going to overall support student outcomes? Well, there are many research studies that point to CTE as a way to contextually teach academic concepts. Now, how often as teachers do we hear, why do I have to learn this? But CTE helps students to make those connections between theory and application that supports both the academic and technical learning. We focus on career ready practices in all of our courses, including communication, problem solving, and working as part of a team, which is so important. Um, in the classroom, we utilize the design process, which is very similar to the scientific method, um, which is used in lab science. And in the design process, students identify a problem, they brainstorm, and then they design potential solutions. Those designs are often drawings to scale, which helps to reinforce measurement and fractions. I've seen practical application of the Pythagorean theorem reinforced in many CTE classrooms, but some examples are with building of towers or even making a concrete form to prepare uh, or to lay concrete. And technical manuals are utilized in many high school CTE classrooms, which provide students 
the practical application of comprehension of complex information. We also offer work-based learning, which includes apprenticeship, work study, and supports student learning. And again, there's reinforcement of the career-ready practices. And then lastly, something that a lot of people don't realize is that 43 of our 44 CTE programs of study offer dual enrollment options or articulated college credit. Wow, what, what a great time to be a student in Maryland and certainly a student in Frederick County Public Schools. You know, as a parent, I love that, you know, my middle schooler, soon to be high schooler has these options because it sort of looks at the broad application of skills. Uh, I know certainly when I have a repair that I need to be made in my house or something, I, I don't have the skill set to do that and the expertise that we rely on um, and, and doesn't minimize the skills and talents that are required to do that. We know that there's so much to celebrate, so much, um, such a good time to be in the field of CTE, but we also know there's more to accomplish. We know you've got a lot of aspirational things that you wanna tackle. Some of the items that you've shared in the past have been kind of looking at this new career pathway tools, particularly mm -hmm. how we are communicating some of these post-CCR options available within FCPS to students and families. Uh, certainly, we know that uh, the CTC is a highly desired um, place to go study. We have more students interested than, than seats available. Um, and we know that you're working diligently to expand use apprenticeship with our employers throughout, through the Maryland Works Grant. So when you think about the work ahead, if you were to say if there's one thing that you really want to focus on and highlight, what would you want our audience to know? I don't think there's any one thing. We just want to continue to um, provide opportunities for all students to participate in youth apprenticeship, um, for all students to be able to have the knowledge so that they can uh, take and pass industry certifications. And one area that I would that I'm really just at the very beginning of exploring is how can we partner with other uh, community members to explore transportation options for our students so that all students have the ability to participate in the work-based learning experiences and are not, you know, that, uh, that transportation is not a barrier. Yeah, that's such a great point, especially in Frederick County, where we are so geographically expansive. You know, mm -hmm. how do we make sure that kids can not only get to our program, but also get to work sites? Um, you know, th th making sure that we can dismantle any of those barriers that, that are present themselves. So last, one of the things that we're really trying to think about with Blueprint is the importance of innovation. And, you know, mm -hmm. I talk to the team a lot about opportunities ahead of us and how there are ways in which we can reimagine work that we've done traditionally into new spaces. And so our teams are really thinking deeply, um, including you, about sort of all the innovations that are um, in front of us, some things that we might be reimagining, um, some approaches that we might be considering in favor of new ideas. So as you look toward the future, what do you hope to accomplish in the next three to five years with our Pillar 3B work? I think my greatest wish is that we leverage all of our community partnerships, that we come together, the county, the city, FCC and FCPS, and we secure funding from the state or the federal government. We find a location that can be utilized to expand career and technical education so that we're able to offer these opportunities to all students who are interested. I think providing access in, as you say, creative ways is, is very important to the success of our future students and to be able to meet our blueprint goals. Well, and what, what a great example of how our county government, our community college, our school system are all working together to really find ways to not only support our students, but the community at large. And we are so grateful and lucky to have you leading that effort. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Christine Pearl, for your insights today. Your knowledge and expertise is going to be the key to unlocking this blueprint work. The information that you shared is very insightful, uh, very uh, important, and really has helped to unlock this topic for us all. That brings us to the end of our time today. 
please go to our website at www.fcps.org forward slash blueprint and click on stakeholder resources to check out more information and unlock the blueprint with us. Thank you.